Hi, how you doing? My name is James Clem. How's your day going? This video is going to be about bonding on a zirconia abutment onto a tie base and it's really easy to do. Let's go through the products that we need to get this job done. First of all, I want to condition my tie base and the internal component of my zirconia abutment. I'm going to do that with a micro etcher. This is by Danville and I have a macro lab that keeps that sand from getting all over my laboratory. The next step is to condition our zirconia abutment with IvyClean. What that's going to do is condition that adhesive surface so we can use Model Bond Plus as a metal primer, both on the zirconia and also the tie base. The next thing I'm going to do for cementation is take plumber's tape and place that inside of that screw access so when we're cementing, there's no cement getting down into that screw access. Make sure there's a few micro tip brushes for Ivy Clean application and scrubbing, Monobond Plus, and also cleaning up that resin when you're cementing. My favorite adhesive blackout cement, which is HO, which is the multi-link hybrid abutment, is really great for bonding these in because it will block out that tie base on both a zirconia, which you don't need as much because it's fairly opaque. Here I'm using an F2, which is really opaque zirconia, that's a ceric zirconia, or if you're using a Emax abutment. Even though the instructions with the Motulink hybrid abutment HO cement says that it's mainly dual cure, which it is, it is responsive to the new Power Cure light. We're going to hold it together and tack it with the Power Cure light. That's enough to keep it well tacked so it doesn't move around, and then the Auto Cure will cure completely in that interface between your abutment and your tie base. Once the tacking is completed, you're going to let that sit on your lab bench for about seven to nine minutes before finishing. But before you do that, make sure you put liquid strip on that seam between the tie base and the abutment. And the reason why is there's this oxygen inhibited layer that may be microscopic, but the bacteria is going to know it's there. So you want a complete cured surface. You're going to place that liquid strip and let it dwell until you're ready to polish. I'm going to use the JK03 Meisinger Lab Kit to go through the polishing techniques in that cervical area, that subgingival. I do want to do a little shaking right where the zirconia abutment comes off that tie base because of minimal thickness issues when you design it and machine it. I want to slenderize that, particularly if I'm sub bone on the tie base emergence off that implant. Once we polish that, we're ready to go. We're gonna steam clean that before we're ready to fit that in the mouth. Now, in this case, you may notice that the abutment seems fairly dark. I do infiltrate those abutments prior to centering. I'm gonna use the Surcat LT coloring liquid with two to three coats of the A2, which works really nice. You're gonna use the dry cycle when you place that through the speed fire. I like to get about two to three shades darker. I'm using the Cerex Zirconia F2 abutment, which is really opaque. So you got to get it darker because in the mouth that's going to be brighter. So I'm going to go more with like an A3 to A4, even though the F2 is more like an A2. It's still pretty bright unless I infiltrate first. And that's how I get my Zirconia abutments to work posteriorly. And surely I'm now placing just a little bit of the pink mile on the labial component of that sub gingival zone to really make it look good through those soft tissues, particularly if you have a thinner biotype. What I have found in my clinical theater with CEREC and all my dentistry is I have templates and very consistent steps that I do the same order every time. That way we're proficient, it happens quickly, and we just have a better day. I'll tell you this, I've been making my own abutments back with InLab before we had it on chair side. So that probably goes back eight or nine years. And using this cementation technique, and I know it may happen, but I have yet to have a tie base separate from the abutment, whether it be Emacs or Zirconia. So using a consistent step profile, I do let that inner phase cure overnight. So I like to least cement these a good 24 hours before the patient's coming in. Most of my cases is that I'll take the scan intraorally before I'm ready to load the implant. In most cases, that's what I'm doing. So it could be in two situations. We're uncovering a buried implant for one reason or another. I'm gonna take my scan post impression then, or I'm gonna take the healing collar off and take my scan 
post-impression about a month before I load. That's pretty routine in my clinical theater. When the patient comes back in a month for loading, all we do is screw this in. It's so accurate and I'm really pleased on the way it's going. This is the seated restoration and final abutment that you see representing the case that was finished for this technique. It was streamlined. I use a use zirconia more in the premolar and anterior zone where I just don't have a lot of volume for a two-piece but it does work very well. If you have any comments or questions, I wanna hear what you have to say. It's really important that you talk to me, right? Talk to me about anything you want. Just ask the question. It will often give me an idea for another video or I can be very specific in getting back to you on any questions. And that's why I do this. I like to be part of the community. Part of the learning process is even with me. I do have a lot of experience. I'm very confident in what I do with Sarek and the clinical theater with the digital platform. So thanks for watching. I love you guys. Talk to you in the next video.